Hello, greetings to everyone and welcome to this video lecture on cosmology. In the last lectures we have mentioned the basic concepts of the universe, space, time, matter and motion. And we have already seen that in the last few lectures the concepts of matter, space and time were dealt with and we understood. Now what remains of the basic concepts of the mechanistic universe is motion. Today in this video lecture first we deal with motion then we see how the mechanistic view of the world provides us with a view of cosmos that is highly deterministic or mechanistic. Now what is motion in line with our understanding of matter, space and time? According to the mechanistic conception, atomic particles are supposed to be in, con in a continuous motion. And motion is the displacement of material particles in space and time. It naturally signifies local motion. We know what is local motion. What is meant by local motion? It is the motion of material bodies and particles from one place to another in space and time. From this it is clear that motion implies both space and time insofar as it takes place in time and space. But though motion occurs in space and time, it does not affect space and time themselves. Because space and time as we have already seen are independent and absolute to each other. And though the motion takes place in space and time, they are unaffected by space and time themselves, they are causally passive. Space and time are containers of motion and that which moves is the material body in space and time. From that it is clear that motion implies matter. That is the moment we talk of motion we can think about it only in relation to some body or some matter that is in motion or that is moving. Without that it is difficult to think about or to speak about motion. But that does not mean that matter does imply motion. Matter does not imply motion because we can think of motionless matter. matter need not necessarily be connected to motion. Moreover, in the definition of matter as full space, the concept of motion is not contained. Otherwise, motionless matter would be a contradiction. Matter as such is full space without motion. But if we are to talk about motion, then we can't but talk about it in terms of some body that is in motion. Thus, motion implies matter and matter does not imply motion. Now the question is, what is that causes motion? Matter cannot be the cause of motion because in the definition of matter as full space, it does not contain the element of motion. Nor can we say that space and time cause motion because they are causally passive. They are absolute and independent of motion and matter then what can cause motion? The answer is that nothing can cause motion but only motion can cause motion. That is motion of a moving body moves another body and this moves another body and so on. Thus motion moves itself. Since motion cannot be derived from matter nor from space and time it acquires the character of an independency of matter, space and time and thus quasi motion becomes a quasi substantial character. Hence the quantity of motion must be constant. This substantial independent character of motion is stated by the law of inertia. You know what is law of inertia? We know that the law of inertia, it is the first of the three laws of motion by Isaac Newton. According to this law, a body remains in its state of rest or of uniform motion in a straight line unless it is compelled to change by a force impressed on it. This means that 
a body which is at rest will be at rest and a body which is moving will go on moving as if in a, on a straight line. Here motion is self-explanatory. It does not require an explanation. This goes in contrast to Aristotelian position of motion. So we now we take, we take a contrasting notions of understanding motion by Aristotle with Isaac Newton. Now if you look into the philosophy of Aristotle, the whole of his philosophy is based on the denial of the constancy of motion. According to Aristotle, everything which is moving moves only because and as long as some mover moves it. That is, a material body is incapable of moving without the continuous action of a mover and force is needed to keep a body moving in the Aristotelian universe. Without a force from outside, no body can be in motion. While this is not the case in the world of Galileo and Newton, according to Aristotle, motion requires an explanation and the ultimate explanation of any motion is found in the first unmoved mover, the famous unmoved mover is brought here. This is the core of the Aristotelian proof of the existence of God accepted by St. Thomas. The principle here is that whatever is, is moved, is moved by another. This goes in contrast to Newton's principle of inertia that if a thing is moving, it will go on moving. Thus, for any particular motion, there are two interpretations. There is one interpretation by Aristotle, there is another interpretation by Isaac Newton. For Aristotle, if a body is moving, another moves it. For Newton, if a body is moving, it will go on moving because mo the motion is self-explanatory. Mo motion moves motion. Having now seen, understood with the Newtonian conception of motion in comparison with or in contrast with that of Aristotle, for our understanding of the mechanistic conception of the universe, it is now something rudimentary to check with our knowledge of certain terms and their meanings and vocabularies that are used in our ordinary conversation when describing motion of objects in general in our ordinary conversation. That will facilitate in more of a in a feasible way for a further understanding and comprehension of the explanation of the universe by the class both by the classical and the modern cosmologies. Therefore, now we just in connection with the motion, we try to check with our understanding of the vocabularies used to describe motion in with certain meanings, which is a real grasp of our understanding of the universe. Kinematics is the science describing the motion of objects using words, diagrams, numbers, graphs and equations. It explains, the kinematics explains the words and, and their meanings used to describe the motion with the reference to objects in space and time. Once we understand the meaning of these words used to, to describe objects in motion in our understanding, that would imply or that that shows that that will mean that we understand motion explained in the mechanistic conception of the universe or motion to be explained by different cosmologies in our co contemporary cosmology. We take up for our study the terms such as scalars, vectors, distance, displacement, speed, velocity and acceleration. And these are terms used with the regularity to describe the motion of objects. Now our aim is to become very familiar with, the, with these meanings and their usages that will help or that will prove that we understand motion in their explanation with these various terms and their significance. The words and phrases are used in our ordinary conversation such as going fast, stopped, slowing down, speeding up and turning. These words provide a sufficient vocabulary for describing the motion of objects. 
But in addition to these very ordinary vocabularies, we use the words and we use still further uh, other words such as distance, displacement, speed, velocity and acceleration. We will see now how these words are associated first and foremost with the mathematical quantities that have strict definition. That is to say, our understanding of the motion in describing with these words and these words are intimately connected with mathematical quantities. The mathematical quantities that are used to describe the motion of objects can be divided into two categories. The quantities either a vector or a scalar. These two categories can be distinguished from one another by their distinct definitions in mathematical quantity. A scalar quantity is, a, is defined as the physical quantity that has only magnitude or a numerical value alone. For example, it has a numerical value or magnitude in mass or elect electric charge nothing more and nothing less. On the other hand, a vector quantity is defined as the physical quantity that has both magnitude as well as direction like force and weight that is a magnitude with a direction something towards width. Now to clarify this distinction let us take these following example. Someone says a quantity a, a quantity in magnitude 5 meter it is a scalar quantity because there is no direction or there is no movement no, uh, heading towards we just to say it's 5 meter it's a scalar quantity suppose we say that 5 meter per second east then it is a vector quantity because it indicates the direction east now we speak about 5 meter per second north is a vector quantity because it shows direction but we, if you say just to say 20 degrees Celsius or 256 bytes or 4000 calories these are just a mass which has no direction therefore they are scalar quantities scalar quantities vector quantities with the directional and scalar quantities without direction only magnitude in line with the scalar and vector quantities, there is what we call the distance and displacement. Now the terms distance and displacement used to describe motion and this we understand in line with the significance of scalar and vector quantities. Distance and displacement are two quantities that may seem to mean the same thing, yet they have a different definitions and meanings. So distance is a scalar quantity, scalar quantity we, we already know that it is without any direction, just a magnitude, thus distance is just a magnitude that refers to how much ground an object has covered in its motion, no direction, therefore we say distance, when you say about distance it is a scalar quantity. But when we speak about displacement is a vector quantity, it refers to a direction that is how far out of place an object is that is how far an object is displaced or out of place from one position to a different position it refers to the object's overall change in position for example let us consider the motion a lady walks four meters east and two meters south and then next 4 meters west and finally 2 meters north. Now even though the lady has walked a total distance of 12 meters, she has a distance of 12 meters, her displacement is 0 meters. During the course of her motion she has covered 12 meters of ground, that is the distance is 12 meters. But when she finished her walking she is there back to the same position where she started walking because the 4 meters east is cancelled by 4 meters west. 2 meters south is cancelled by 2 meters north. Then the lady at the last point arrives the same pos position where she started walking. Therefore, she has not moved from her position where she started at the end of the motion. 
therefore displacement is 0 meters and now let us consider another example the position of a cross country skier at various times we know that skiing people take different directions and different positions now a skier moves make a four steps from A to B and B to C and C to D now he takes the first move from the position A to C in 1 minute 180 meters per second in one second in the next second he makes the next direction from B to C B to C 140 meters from B to C then next minute from C to D in one minute he, he takes 100 meters and here are we how are we to calculate the resulting displacement and distance traveled by the skier therefore the distance is the sum total of the movement or the distance he covered from A to B 180 and B to C 140 and from B, C to D 100 meters totally there is a 420 meters distance the skier covers but what is his, his displacement displacement is the difference in position from the position A where he started and the position D where he ends up and it is marked that the, the distance between position A and position D is 140 meters therefore he has a displacement of 140 meters now to understand the distinction between distance and displacement we must know the definitions displacement is a vector quantity which is direction aware and distance is a scalar quantity which is ignorant of direction therefore when an object changes its direction of motion displacement takes this direction change into account but in heading the opposite direction effectively it begins to cancel whatever displacement that was once taken accordingly it is calculated the displacement of a motion of an object and the distance is the sum total of the distance by the motion taken by the object no, no matter where which position the object is at the end of the motion now we come to the next vocabulary that is used to describe motion is speed and velocity just as distance and displacement have distinctly different meanings despite their similarities so we find do speed and velocity have some distinctions speed as we hear it's itself a, a speed means it speaks of a magnitude without any direction naturally we will say that speed is a scalar quantity that refers to how fast an object is moving speed can be thought of as the rate at which an object covers distance a fast moving object has a high speed and covers a relatively large distance in a short amount of time contrasting this to a slow moving object that has a low speed it covers a relatively small amount of distance in the same amount of time an object with no movement at all has a zero speed now what is velocity velocity is a vector quantity that refers to the rate at which the object changes its position imagine a person moving rapidly one step forward and one step backward always returning to the original starting position one step forward and another step backward forward backward forward backward while this might result in a frenzy of activity it would result in a zero velocity because there is no changes in position in the speed because the person always returns to the original position the position the motion would never result in a change in position because of that there is no velocity since velocity is defined as the rate at which the position changes this motion results in zero velocity 
if a person in motion wishes to maximize their velocity then the person must make a, every effort to maximize the amount that they are displaced from their original position every step must go into moving that person further from where he or she started for certain the person should never change directions and begin to return to the starting position as vector quantity velocity is direction aware because it is direction oriented and speed is without any direction oriented when evaluating the velocity of an object one must keep track of this direction it would not be enough to say that an object has a velocity of 55 meter per hour it has no velocity it doesn't mean or it has no significance of a velocity we can say 55 meter per hour better to say it's a speed not a velocity one must include if it is to be a velocity one must include direction information in order to fully describe the velocity of the object for instance it is not enough to say that 55 meter per hour rather we must describe an object's velocity as being 55 meter per hour east that means towards east it is moving and means it is changing its position this is one of the essential difference between speed and velocity speed is a scalar quantity and does not keep track of direction while velocity is a vector quantity and is direction aware it always keeps or changes its position by speeding towards or it is moving towards something in a direction thus it is a velocity without direction it is just a speed now describing the direction of the velocity velocity vector is easy the direction of the velocity vector is simply the same as the direction that an object is moving it would not it would not matter whether the object is speeding up or slowing down if an object is moving rightwards then its velocity is described as being rightwards if an object is moving downwards then its velocity is described as being downwards so an aeroplane moving towards the west with a speed of 300 meter per hour has a velocity of 300 meter per hour west not that speed has no direction and the ve velocity has at any instant is simply the speed value with a direction that is in short the distinction between speed and velocity now the final another vocabulary that is often used in the description of our day to day life with this motion is acceleration The, the the mathematical quantity regarding motion is acceleration it is an often confused quantity that is to say acceleration has a meaning much different than the meaning associated with it by sports announcers and other individuals describing motion in our day to day experience if we are to define acceleration acceleration is a vector quantity the rate at which an object changes its velocity so change of velocity is that which makes a thing acceler in acceleration an object is accelerating if it is changing its velocity sports announcers will occasionally say that a person is accelerating if he or she is moving fast yet acceleration has nothing to do with going fast a person can be moving very fast and still not be accelerating acceleration has to do with the changing how fast an object is moving if an object is not changing its velocity then the object is not accelerating any time an object's velocity is changing the object is said to be accelerating it has an acceleration for example a northward moving accelerating object the velocity is changing over the course of time in fact the velocity is changing by a constant amount of 10 meter per second in each second of time for example at the zero seconds there is zero meter but at second at the first second 
there is 10 meter speed and, and so at the at sec, uh, 2 minutes 20 meter at 3 minutes 30 minute 30 meter thus the velocity is getting changed constantly 10 meter per second each thus there is acceleration thus we say any time an object's velocity is changing the object is said to be accelerating and it has acceleration now having explained motion with all its vocabularies of our day-to-day -day experience now finally we conclude our mechanistic conception of the universe how with all these basic concepts the universe that appears to us in the Newtonian physics is deterministic cosmos or deterministic universe. We have seen now the basic aspects of the universe presupposed by the Newtonian science to an understanding of the universe that is as a machine which runs automatically according to fixed laws. Now this view is closely related to the to rigorous determinism that is to say the giant cosmic machine is completely determined. Material atoms are passive, they do not have spontaneous motion. They act and interact under the impact of other moving particles. Thus, there is no room for spontaneity and freedom in the mechanistic conception of the universe. That is to say, nature is one deterministic system. It would mean that all that happened had a definite cause and it gave rise to definite effects and the feature of any part of the system could in principle be predicted with absolute certainty if its state at any time was known in all details. From this view, Newton's law of motion was thought to govern the motion of all objects from the smallest particle to the largest stars. From that perspective, according to Simon Laplace, the great French mathematician, we must regard the present state of the universe as the effect of its preceding state and as the cause of the one which is to follow. Moreover, according to him, from any particular state of the universe, not only any of its future states but also any past state is derivable provided all the features of the present state are fully known. Thus, nature was thought to be a complete mechanical system of rigid cause and effect governed by exact and absolute laws that all future events are completely determined. And from this we understand that the mechanistic conception of the universe governed by the laws of nature as prescribed by or as defined by Isaac Newton gives a, a view of the world which is determined, deterministic. And thus we have the clear picture of the mechanistic conception of the universe. And the next lectures we will see the, the new Einsteinian cosmology with a new theory of relativity by which we have a different view of the universe, how it appears to us. We will see that in the next lectures. Thank you.